But there have been other cases, such as Taiwan, which tried to hide a, re a plutonium reprocessing capability, putting hidden exit doors in their reprocessing facilities uh, to try to divert uh, reprocessed plutonium for nuclear weapons. I'm Sean Lynn Jones. I'm the editor of International Security, a quarterly journal that's based here at the Belfer Center at Harvard's Kennedy School. Today, I'm speaking with Vipin Narang, who's a professor in the political science department at MIT, where he's also in the security studies program. Vipin is the author of an article in the just published winter 2016-17 issue of International Security. The article is called Strategies of Nuclear Proliferation, How States Pursue the Bomb. And it's available in print and online in the journal now. Thanks very much for being with us here today, Vipin. I wonder if you could start by just trying to summarize the main argument of your article for us. The article really unpacks the different strategies of nuclear proliferation that states have adopted. The main point of the article is that these differences matter not only to the proliferation landscape and the character of nuclear proliferation at any point in time, but also how states can respond to different uh, states pursuing nuclear weapons based on the strategies that, that they adopt. In your article, you say that there are basically four different strategies of nuclear proliferation. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about those? What's the first one? So the first strategy uh, takes uh, is called nuclear hedging, uh, and the goal of this strategy is to acquire the pieces to eventually, at a later date, at a time of the state's choosing, uh, consummate the program and develop nuclear weapons. Uh, and I identify Japan as what I call an insurance hedger. Uh, it enjoys a nuclear umbrella from the United States, but it does have underlying security threats from China and increasingly North Korea. Uh, and so Japan has very consciously adopted uh, what I call an insurance hedging strategy, putting the pieces in place for a plutonium weapons program, which it could uh, consummate later at a date of its choosing, should it lose the umbrella from the United States, or should uh, its underlying security threats become more acute. What's the, uh, the second type of strategy? So for the states that are actively pursuing a nuclear weapons arsenal, there are three what I call active strategies. And uh, the first one of those is sprinting, which is exactly what you think it would be, uh, which is uh, a state openly and quickly uh, through any means necessary, whether it's plutonium, uranium, both uh, pathways, trying to acquire nuclear weapons. And some of the more prominent examples of the sprinting strategy were actually earlier in the in the nuclear era. So like the United States, Soviet Union, China, uh, all pursued uh, sprinting strategies from beginning to end. What's the third strategy? So the third strategy, an active uh, strategy of proliferation, is what I call sheltered pursuit. And this is where uh, a state either opportunistically cultivates or takes advantage of protection from a major power to pursue nuclear weapons under that shelter. Uh, and a good example, an example is probably the easiest way to describe this strategy, but Pakistan in the 1980s. Pakistan was not an ally of the United States before that, uh, was antagonistic with the Carter administration. Uh, but then all of a sudden the Soviet Union invaded uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan became central to the U.S. strategy to defeat the Soviets uh, in Afghanistan. When the United States uh, extended shelter to Pakistan after the Soviet invasion, uh, Zia al Huq. Uh, used that opportunity to redouble his efforts to acquire nuclear weapons and, in fact, accelerated uh, the enrichment program in the early 1980s during the Reagan administration. So in your article, you call the fourth strategy hiding. What's that all about? Um, a state that really worries about prevention, either military or economic, uh, you know, states that the, the international community least wants to have nuclear weapons. You think of Iraq, uh, Libya, uh, but also a country like South Africa. Uh, which didn't enjoy major power support from either the United States or the Soviet Union uh, in the 1970s and 1980s. It was actually a pariah state, uh, selected a hiding strategy. Uh, sometimes, and more often than not, that requires hidden uranium enrichment pathways. But there have been other cases, such as Taiwan, which tried to hide a, re a plutonium reprocessing capability. Another country you look at in great detail as the major case study in your article is India. What does the India case tell us? There was, it was a long march to nuclear weapons and a long nuclear odyssey, as some prominent scholars have called it. And so it adopted multiple strategies, which allowed me to test you know, various mechanisms in the theory as to why India switched strategies. A lot of the conventional wisdom on India's nuclear proliferation process was it kind of 
stumbled into nuclear weapons and it was technologically deficient and so it took a long time to acquire nuclear weapons. But what I think some of the details that I've surfaced in the India case suggest is that India actually had intentional strategies. If you had, on the basis of your article, one piece of advice to give to the Trump administration, what would it be? One of the greatest non-proliferation tools the United States has had has been our formal extended deterrence guarantees to countries like Japan and NATO allies. And if the Trump administration uh, lives up to its promise to get the allies to do more and they start you know, uh, questioning the credibility of American extended deterrence guarantees, the administration should be prepared for some of these states to start more actively pursuing nuclear weapons uh, and should question whether that is really an American or global interest. Uh, because it's plausible that if Japan gets nuclear weapons or starts actively pursuing nuclear weapons, you might have cascade effects in East Asia. I've been talking to Vipin Narang, who's Associate Professor of Political Science at MIT. His article, Strategies of Nuclear Proliferation, How States Pursue the Bomb, appears in the winter 2016-17 issue of International Security. Thanks again, Vipin. Thank you, Sean.